Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Harmer. This is video 12, and today we're talking about the phaser. Now, it's not just a regular phaser. This one's actually very, very cool. I made this preset here called Dirty Machine because I really don't... It's hard to name presets, okay? And a lot of this is done with the phaser. There's other some unison stuff that we've talked about before, but check this out. Very weird sounding and the spectrum looks strange too. And also made a dirty machine too. So without further ado, let's dive into the preset here, or the uh, the phaser. So a couple things to keep in mind. This phaser located down here in kind of the middle right-ish or so, you're going to have a mix knob, and that's basically saying how much of this phaser effect it's going to have. And the difference with this phaser rather than other phasers is this is going to be applied before the signal gets turned to audio, which means there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. So next you get width is basically the, the width of the phaser, if that doesn't make sense. Let me bring this uh, the speed here down to still. So we have a classic phaser, right? Let's turn this down just a little bit here. So we can kind of see where the phaser is, right where these lines are, these lighter lines there. And with the width, it makes a lot, uh, it shrinks it down a little bit. And then if it's bigger, So that's the easiest way to demonstrate the width. Maybe it's easier to see on the Hertz mode here. And then next up we have the offset. So this is also good to, to uh, show without the speed moving. So this offset is basically saying, we're gonna move wherever these this pattern, this pattern, I guess, this light purple, light purple, whatever you wanna call it, this is gonna determine where that's gonna be. And as I move the offset, it changes. And it's a 360 knob, so you can kind of move it. And 360 degrees, a whole circle. And it's cool to automate too, because you can you can move this with your song as well. However you want to do that. And then the speed basically is how fast this is going to move. So if we have it back to default, which is going to be 32. And then we can go faster, so you go to 16. And then really fast. And then the other way is basically going to go down the opposite direction, if that makes sense. So that's going up, and that's going down. And then you got the keyboard tracking, which is kind of cool too. Because that pattern, wherever that offset is, what we kind of talked about just a little bit ago, the keyboard setting is going to determine where that is based on the note you're playing. As you can see how that changes here. So now that these knobs are kind of out of the way, here's where the, a lot of the cool part goes in. So let's go to default, default. And this little switch here is very cool from octaves to hertz to harmonics. So let's take a look at what some of this does. So let's get our phaser mix about 50%. And let's go over to hertz. So it's a very, very different way the phaser is applying itself to the partials. And if we look on hertz here, we can see it's a very even distribution. And then another cool part is if we go to harmonic. And that can get kind of crazy too if we drop this down, let's see, like two octaves. Put some unison on here. And that's just on the classic mode. So if we click down this list, we're going to have a couple uh, different stuff here. So first thing to keep in mind, according to the manual, this classic, the triangle and the eggs, whatever that's really, whatever that really means, those first three are basically the classic type of phaser sound. So let's put some of our stuff back to default here. And let's take our mix down to 50% and let's put this back up to octaves. So this is the classic, the classic phaser sound. We've got the triangle which is a little different. And then we have the eggs. And now for the cool part, so these ones, Deep, Deeper, Condom, Twins, Cascade, and Box are basically special versions. And then these ones down here are 
super extra awesome special, apparently. So deep is very, very strange. And what's cool about this mix knob, as you can see here, if we go all the way to the right, this is literally taking everything else but what the phaser is doing out of the mix. So very cool. Very kind of strange effect there. And then if you go to harmonic, and that's a strange sound. Strange sound, and that's just some some unison. Dropped it at two octaves, and then put this phaser on and some distortion. Pretty simple, really. And then next up, we have some deeper. Let's bring this up just a little bit here. And this knob, or the switch here with octave hertz and harmonic is really, really cool. You can spend a lot of time with this stuff. And then next up we have condom, whatever that really means. Very strange. And then next up we have twins. And then cascade. This one's kind of interesting. And then box, one of my favorite ones from this first spe special list. And this width knob is very cool to play around too. Now something that uh, we should talk about here, so if you notice here, this is our fundamental frequency. And since the phaser is kind of messing around with it, something to keep in mind is this prot knob here. So if we put this all the way up, it's going to protect our lowest fundamental frequency here. So that's why if you get super crazy with a phaser and you're losing your fundamental, definitely keep an eye out for this slider here and put that up if you need to. Because without it, it goes away. Something to keep in mind. Pretty cool it's there. I know we generally don't really use it too much probably so far in this tutorial, but that's a definitely a good spot to use it. And that's just weird. Now some of the fun really happens. So let's put this back to about 50. Let's set all these back to default here. Now we have frequency. Now this one's kind of strange because it changes the frequency or modulates the frequency of the partials themselves. So check this out. It's almost like the prism sound a little bit. And you can do weird stuff in this graph as well. Some kind of, let's do something like this. And that just looks strange right there. And I made a weird kind of preset. I forget what I, what did I call it? Something is wrong. Yeah. So I kind of did something similar like that using the custom one and I mapped them to X and Y. It's a lot of cool stuff. You can do a lot of sound effects with this phaser itself. It's not just like a, oh, here's a phaser, here's the chorus, here's whatever effect stuff. There's a lot of depth within here. So you probably notice we have custom here. So that's an interesting thing in itself. So if we go to classic and then we go to custom, it brings us this graph here. So it's a little loud here. So here's kind of the typical classic, I guess, phaser sound. But the cool part about this is you can really draw your own shape in here. Something kind of here. And 
And then you can also put your custom stuff into the harmonic, which is just wild. And even that's just a strange sound that you can throw some effect, you can throw some delay on it. Throw some reverb and then smack it. And then maybe here we, we want to use our protection. It's always smart to use protection. But yeah, so that's basically this phaser in a nutshell. It's very cool. I would highly suggest just to spend some time just in this phaser. Keep an eye on your prot slider up there as well. And just have fun. The, the manual says if you want to do some type of harmonic FM kind of sounds, then definitely check out the harmonic setting here at the very bottom. And then just play around with some weird stuff as well. Some other ones I had were, I think I did some, maybe I didn't save it, I don't know. But yeah, so you can do weird sounds kind of like this one. And that's not even with reverb or anything. Definitely a cool synth, so hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.